This is cdlexam.com video presentation. For any other questions or inquiries, please refer to www.cdlexam.com online resources. Upon completion of the presentation, you will learn all the right answers. And good news! Often to choose the right answers, you need just one or two words. We call them keywords and we will show them to you during presentation. Okay, um, general knowledge, part one, questions through uh, one through eight. Uh, the program <clears throat> imitates uh, the way how you do it in the driver license office. You well, read the questions, you choose the right answer, and then you click enter to confirm, well, your choice. And then in the driver license office, you wait until the program takes you to the next uh, question. Here, when you read the question, uh, well, choose your, make your choice, and uh, click enter to confirm it, the program uh, tells you you're correct or sometimes not. And uh, uh, programs gives you those two or sometimes, uh, well, usually one or two words you need to pay particular attention to because those two words, that's your guideline through, well, uh, the process of, uh, well, making choice. So let's start. Question number one. You are driving on a straight level highway at 50 miles per hour. Uh -huh. There are no vehicles in front of you. Suddenly, a tire blows out in your vehicle. Suddenly, you drive on 50 miles per hour and tire, boom, blows out. What should you do first? Uh -huh. you, should, you should stay off the brake. That's the right answer. Please, uh, well, commit to your memory. Then, what you need to do, you choose it. You click enter. To confirm it, that's exactly what you need to do in the driver license office. And yeah, the program tells you, aha, uh -huh, suddenly a tire Your blows. Your answer is correct. Yeah, the answer is correct. And that's what you need to pay attention next time when you choose, when, when you uh, encounter this question. Stay off the brakes. Stay off the brakes. Very good. Uh huh. And now the program takes you to the uh, second question. Question number two. You are driving a new truck with a manual transmission. Manual transmission. What gear will you probably have to use to take a long, steep downhill grade? Manual transmission, always you should use a lower gear. Lower gear. A lower gear. Let's choose this answer and click enter. And the program tells you, yeah, correct. And lower gear. remember, low lower gear. Lower gear. Keyword, right. lower gear. Okay, question number three. You are checking your wheels and rims for a pre-trip inspection. Which of the statements is true? You know, sometimes you will be given that kind of questions. You need to choose uh, one right statement. Uh, <clears throat> and, I see uh, one right word. Rust. Rust. Rust around the wheel. So, when you ask it uh, what uh, statement is correct about rims and wheels, yeah, the rust is uh, the word which, uh, well, tells you that's probably the right answer. Rust around wheels not <clears throat> may mean that they are loose. Choose the answer, confirm it by clicking enter, <clears throat> and yes, program tells you correct. When you check your wheels, that's what you need to pay attention to. Rust around wheel nuts. Rust. Question number four. <clears throat> you are checking your tires for a pre-trip inspection. Again, which of the statements is true? Well, now I see right something about right the, away. Yeah, something about tires. The tires of mismatched sizes. Mismatched sizes. Yeah. Uh, well, should not be used together in the same vehicle. That's the two words which again tells you this is correct answer. Make your choice, Corre confirm it by clicking enter and uh, program, yeah, uh, a knowledge, yes, that's correct. 
answer tires of mismatched sizes. Those are two words you need to pay attention to. Mismatch sizes. Remember. Question number five. If a straight vehicle, no trailer, not articulation, goes into the front wheel skid, it will. What happened to this, like, you know, st straight vehicle if it goes into the front wheel skid? Uh, <clears throat> be very careful, please. Those are two answers, uh, like, you know, very similar to each other. Go straight ahead, and he is also go straight ahead. Pay attention to this small pro uh, proverb. Even. Uh, Even. Go straight ahead. It will go. It, it, if it goes into the skid, it will go straight ahead. Even, Even if you turn the steering wheel. Even if the steering wheel is turned. All right. Okay. Let's choose this answer. And uh, let's see. Confirm it. Click enter. Yes. If it goes into the front wheel skid, you see, the program advises you, even if the wheel is turned, even wheel is turned. All right. And again, guys, you just follow that kind of um, logic, apply this kind of logic, and you'll be okay. Question number six. So far, we're doing good. The program, we didn't, uh, well, do any, any, any wrong. Number six. If you need to leave the road in a traffic emergency, Traffic emergency. Emergency. Well, you should. How? What? What you need? What you need to do? How you need to? You supposed to leave the road. Uh huh. Interestingly, avoid braking. Avoid braking. Avoid braking until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per about hour. About 20 miles per hour. When you see this, uh huh, that's your right answer. Choose it. Confirm it by clicking enter. Yes, correct. If you need to leave the road, you need to avoid braking until the speed drop to about 20 miles. 20 per miles per hour. Watch it. Question number seven. Which of these statements about certain types of cargo is true? May I tell the right answer? Yeah, sure. I would say unstable load. Give me the right Unstable answer. Stable load. When you see something, when uh, the question uh, asking you about, uh, well, cargo, yeah, unstable load, such as, uh, well, hanging meat or livestock can require extra caution on curves. All right, let's see. How, uh huh. Yeah, hanging meat. Hanging meat. Hanging meat. That's a stable load. A landmark of the right answer in this uh, question. Number eight. According to the driver's manual, why should you limit the use of your horn? Why? Uh, and again, uh, well, it's uh, pretty obvious. Uh, it can start a lot of other drivers. It can start a lot of drivers. So when you ask it, why should you limit the use of your horn? Limit. It can startle other drivers. Startle. All right. One let's, word. Let's startle. Continue. Question number nine. <clears throat> you do not have a hazardous materials endorsement on your commercial driver license. But you are asked to deliver a hazardous material in a placarded vehicle. Uh -huh, that's Excuse it. me, but I'm going to refuse. Yes. You should. What you should do? You should refuse. Refuse. If the vehicle is placarded, having like you know those two uh, four i'm sorry four diamond uh, uh, shaped uh, mm, uh, things uh, on the side of the vehicle you should refuse to hold the lot if refuse all right yes Proper. you do not have a hazardous materials endorsement refuse you are not uh, like allowed to uh, carry those kind of cargo number 10 which of these statements about staying alert to drive is true? I know again. Staying alert. Uh huh. I know again. Sleep is the only thing that can overcome fatigue. I remember one word. Fatigue. fatigue. Uh huh. If you ask it about how you should uh, stay alert to drive, uh, the, you need to remember that fatigue can be uh, like um, well uh, overcome only. Uh, Sleep is the only thing that can overcome fatigue. Yes, fatigue. 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 
All right. Question number 11. Your vehicle has hydraulic brakes. While traveling on a level road, you press the brake pedal and find that it goes to the floor. Well, brake doesn't work. Which of the statement is true? And uh, the correct answer in this case is uh, this one. Pumping the brake pedal may bring the pressure up so you can stop the vehicle. So if you go on a level road, mm -hmm, you press the brake pedal, find that boom, brake failure goes to the floor. The brake pedal goes to the floor. What you need to do? You need to pump the brake. It may bring the pressure up. All right. You choose, you confirm, and yes, the program says, yeah, correct. If uh, you find the brake pedal goes to the floor, the keyword is pumping, pumping. All right? Question number 11, 12. You are driving a vehicle at 55 miles per hour on dry pavement. About how much total stopping distance will you need to bring it to a stop when you see this 50 miles per hour that you drive on a dry pavement you should directly look for football field length that's how much distance you will need to stop not the twice the length not the half the length it's just the length of a football field okay a 50 miles per hour that's the distance the total stopping distance you need to stop your vehicle. All right, at the length of a football field, enter yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Correct, length of a football field. Just remember, 55 miles per hour. Question number 13. Which statement about cold weather driving is true? Cold weather driving. Again, the, the, the type of question uh, you are asked, um, is just to choose one right statement and in this particular case you need to create association cold weather driving washer antifreeze should be used well we're not talking about Florida we're not talking about California but we're talking about some uh, uh, well uh, really cold weather driving windshield washer antifreeze should be used cold weather driving windshield washer antifreeze you choose right answer you confirm it yes that's correct cold weather antifreeze and that's how you learn if you make a mistake the program will correct you will show you which one uh, like a right um, words you need to pay attention to uh, question number 14 when driving at night you should what you should do when you drive at night uh -huh, you need to adjust your speed uh, you need to adjust your speed in order to keep your stopping distance within your sight distance distance within your sight distance that's how you need to adjust your speed when you drive at night and you you cannot clearly see okay let's see question you choose you correct it hit enter yes and you see that's a like a, a little trick uh, you don't even need to remember the whole stuff if you see this word within aha uh -huh, that's uh, in most cases uh, the indication of the correct answer so again when you're driving at night what you should do you should adjust your speed to keep your stopping distance within within your sight distance question number 15 which of these statements about downshifting is true? How you need to downshift to put the well uh, to lo the lower gear? And uh, mm, please uh, mm, remember, when you downshift for a curve or for a hill, you should do so before before you enter the curve. That's actually the general rule. When you need to do something, you need to do it before you start the, well, actual, um, uh, um, well, turning. Okay? When you uh, downshift for a curve, you should do so before. And this uh, rule is applied uh, in, well, um, in uh, other cases also. 
when you downshift for a curve you should do so before you enter the curve before curve you need to slow down you need to turn the lower gear before curve question number 16 for your safety when setting out reflective triangles you should you should hold the triangles between yourself and oncoming traffic what does it mean you are not asking how far you need to put your reflective triangles actually there are three of them but uh, you need to remember you need to put the triangles for safety between yourself and oncoming traffic so the oncoming drivers uh, would be able to see you mm -hmm. safety between yourself and oncoming traffic that's how you need to hold the triangles let's see if we are correct yes we are triangles need to be put between yourself and traffic all right good question number 17 as the blood alcohol concentration abbreviation BAC you will see this abbreviation later on uh, goes up what happens when the blood alcohol concentration BAC goes up what happens uh, please remember uh, this word judgment and self-control there's these are two things actually judgment first thing which uh, is affected when BAC goes up judgment is affected judgment um, well that's the first thing which affect your well uh, ability to drive your ability to control and uh, self-control judgment and self-control are affected question number 18 which of this is a good thing to remember about using mirrors how you are uh, like supposed to use mirrors and uh, please remember when you use mirrors never forget there are blind spots that your mirror cannot show and that's by the way that's why you have to uh, use not only mirrors but actually turn your head and look what is well behind uh, well uh, on your side when you use mirrors remember there are blind spots that your mirror cannot show and the program says yes we are correct mirrors blind spots very short question number 19 hydroplaning uh, well you are asked what the hydroplaning is associated with and the hydroplaning is a special phenomenon which is uh, uh, well um, characteristic for uh, uh, southern state for example when the uh, road is smooth and uh, uh, during the rain uh, the road surface is covered with a very thin film of water and you start actually planes you start uh, well um, you start losing uh, traction your tires lose traction with the uh, road surface and that's what hydroplaning is and uh, obviously hydroplaning is more likely when tire pressure is low because you are not uh, able to use the advantage of your uh, tread depth okay hydroplaning very short question remember please it is more likely if the tire pressure is low mm -hmm. good Question number 20. If you are being tailgated, you should. What you should do, in other words, if somebody is uh, after you, not after you, but you know, trying to. <clears throat> uh, too close yeah, to too you. Too close to you. Uh, and uh, in this case, again, safety first. Please remember, you need to increase your following distance, not speed up not uh, uh, not to break not uh, honk your horn no you need to uh, very safely slowly uh, increase your following distance the distance between you and uh, the driver in front of you in uh, well in order if you need uh, uh, to well suddenly break hit the brake at least you will be able to to do it 
you will uh, have enough distance in front of you. Okay? So if you are being tailgated, somebody too close to you from behind, please, what you should do, you should increase your falling distance. Uh -huh. Okay? We have chosen this, uh, this answer. We hit enter. And the, yeah, the program again advises you, you are correct. Tailgated, increase distance. Question number 21. A key principle to remember about loading cargo is to keep the load. How you are uh, well, uh, need to, to uh, distribute the load, um, the, the cargo, when you load it. And uh, uh, the key word is balanced. 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 Uh, you need to, uh, well, to balance the cargo. Uh, the, the load in cargo area. Loading cargo and uh, you need uh, to uh, well uh, to keep it balanced in the cargo area. Balance. 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 Question number 22. How far should a driver look ahead of the vehicle while driving? How far and, uh, well, please just remember, 12 to 15 seconds. Uh, <clears throat> 12 to 15 seconds. That's the type of question you just need to simply commit to your memory. How far ahead a vehicle, uh, of your vehicle, uh, should you, uh, well, should you look? It's 12 to 15 seconds. That means the distance which your uh, vehicle travels well, within these 12 to 15 seconds. When you're driving at 60 miles per hour, and 60 miles per hour, you have to look. It would be another question. Another yeah, there, are, there mile. would be another question about the same uh, like principle. So you just need to remember 12 to 15 seconds. That's the distance you should look ahead of your vehicle while driving. Mm -hmm. Look ahead, 12, 15 seconds. Question number 23. How do you correct a rear wheel acceleration skid? How do you correct a rear wheel acceleration skid? If your uh, well, vehicle goes into the skid, your uh, uh, two, well, you hit accelerator, uh, accelerating pedal too much, and your rear wheels goes into the skid. So, uh, obvious, you need to stop accelerating. If the uh, well, excessive acceleration causes the skid, just stop accelerating. Uh -huh. You see, again, this is the association. Acceleration skid, stop accelerating. And generally, right question uh, sounds exactly like this. Stop accelerating, stop braking. It's a safety measure. Question number 24. The purpose of the retarders is to... Well, you need to know what the retarders are. Retarders, special devices, mechanical devices, electrical devices, devices connected with the um, engine, which help to, uh, well, stop the vehicle, to slow down the vehicle, which help the brakes to slow down the vehicle. And again, retarders could uh, be different uh, type. Uh, and what they do, they help slow the vehicle. You're not asking to actually what's the, well, uh, uh, specific types of retarders. Uh, as a driver, you are not, uh, like, uh, allow it. I mean, uh, you don't have to do to know it. But you need to remember that retarders, they help slow the vehicle uh, and reduce the brake wear. That's the advantage. There are all these advantages of the retarder, but uh, in the well, following questions you will learn it also. Here you just remember, retarders, the purpose of them is to slow the vehicle and reduce brake wear. All right. Question number 25. Controlled braking. Again, short question. Uh, well, you need to choose uh, the, the right uh, answer characterizing the, what the control braking is. And um, the control braking, please remember, uh, straight line. 
Yeah, it used to keep your vehicle in and a that's straight the point. line. That's the point. You when you when you read in the question uh, control braking, uh huh. Start looking for this straight line because that's what control braking is used for to it's keep the vehicle a, in a straight line to avoid uh, going into the ski to avoid to protect you from losing control of your vehicle. Uh huh. Is control braking that something which is used to keep a vehicle in a straight line? while braking. Good. Question number 26. Which of these is a good thing to do when steering to avoid a crash? When you start turning your vehicle to avoid a crash, uh, so what is the good thing to remember to do in such a situation? Uh, <clears throat> please Again, remember, start looking for these particular words. Don't turn any more than needed. Don't turn any more than needed to clear what is in your way. So, well, even when one in the emergency situation, even if you need to, like, uh, uh, react immediately, immediately to avoid a crash, Be still, careful. still, yeah, please be uh, very cautious, try, at least try, remember that you please do not turn any more than needed to clear what is in your way, again, uh, the point is, if you turn too sharp, you, well, at risk to control, uh, mm, to lose control of your vehicle, right, very good, don't turn any more than needed, Hit the enter, yes, avoid a crash, don't turn any more than you need. Question number 27. You should stop driving uh -huh. whenever you become sleepy. Again, uh, there was a previous question, like about uh, 10, 5, 10 questions before, that the only thing which uh, uh, can overcome fatigue is the rest is sleep, uh, well, uh, you need to, um, uh, the only uh, thing which uh, can help you to stay alert it is sleep. So, and that's why you should stop driving whenever you become sleepy. Stop driving. Stop driving. Stop driving. Not after five, after nine hours, after one hour, 13, and, well, doesn't matter. It could, you, the, the other choices could be given to you, but the right answer would be also Whenever you become sleepy, please stop driving. And again, the point is safety. Well, question number 28. Which of these is not a good rule um, to follow when caring for an injured person at an accident scene? Uh, interesting type of question. Mm, uh, you are not asking about the right thing to do. You are asked about wrong thing to do. You are asked what you not, what you have not to do at the accident scene when there is an injured person and you need to take care of, of this person. So be careful with this kind of questions. So you see, the right answer would be something wrong. Something which you don't, well, you are not uh, uh, allow it to, to do. And in this particular case, when you are asked about which is a not a good rule to follow, not a good rule to follow is to keep an injured person cool. Because according to the driver's manual, it's written there, you should to keep injured person warm. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, the person who wrote this question uh, trying to, well, trick you. And uh, uh, you might be, uh, uh, well, choosing this uh, uh, option, cool, no, that's, that's a wrong thing to do, and uh, as a wrong thing to do at the accident scene, this is the correct answer. Please remember, not a good rule to follow, keep an injured person cool, because he, he or she needs to be kept warm at the accident scene. Mm -hmm. And the program, yeah, tells you the same. You are correct. Injured person, keep cool. 
That's a right answer. Not right thing to do. Question number 29. You should avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water. However, if you must, which of these steps can help to keep your brakes working? In other words, to keep your brake pads dry. Uh-huh. And the right answer is A. Gently putting on the brakes. Gently. While driving through the water. Uh, and uh, there is another good trick, good help to you. Gently. The word gently. Whenever you see the word gently, safely, cautiously, most probably, that would be the correct answer. Not in 100% cases, but in 99% of the cases, whenever you see gently safely something cautiously that would be the correct answer and again if you have to go through the deep puddles of flowing water huh, uh, the one of the way to keep your brakes working is gently put on the brakes while driving mm -hmm. you don't have to brake all the way down you just gently put a little bit pressure on the brakes pedal and uh, well that prevents the brake pads uh, get sock. All right, the puddles gently. Question number thirty: Which of these statements about drugs is true? Please remember that's easy association, easy question, but it's very important for you to remember. The use of drugs can lead to an accident and or arrest. You as a driver, as a commercial driver, should never use uh, while drugs, uh, while driving, should never have the drugs in your vehicle because uh, the use of drugs can lead to your, to well, accident and your arrest. Okay, let's see. Answer C. Yes, drugs, arrest, uh, drugs, arrest <clears throat> question number 31 which of this is a good thing to remember when crossing or entering traffic with a heavy vehicle heavy vehicle please pay attention heavy vehicle means it takes time for this vehicle to uh, perform maneuver right and please remember, if you need to cross the traffic, if you need to enter the traffic with that kind of vehicle, uh, remember, it's heavy, it is big, it needs larger gaps. Larger gaps. Heavy vehicles, they definitely need more space. The word which is used here, gap. Heavy vehicles need larger gaps in traffic than much more room mm -hmm. very good yes entering traffic larger gaps question number 32 you are driving a heavy vehicle again with a manual transmission you have to stop the vehicle on the shoulder while driving on an uphill grade on uphill grade so which of this is a good rule to follow when putting it back in motion of the grade so you realize the situation you drive you stop on the shoulder you uphill and now you need to oh turn it back in motion <coughs> what you need to do resume uh-huh what you need to do in this particular case use the parking brake to, to do what? To hold the vehicle until the clutch engages. You remember? This is manual transmission, so you don't have to, uh, well, rely on the, <laughs> on the automatic transmission to hold the vehicle. You need to hold the vehicle. You need to use the parking brake to hold the vehicle until the clutch engages in order to prevent roll back, right? You Because you are uphill. If you don't hold the vehicle with the parking brake, it might roll back and hit something behind you which you are not able to see at this particular moment. Again, the point is safety. Please remember, manual transmission, you stop an uphill grade, you need to get back in motion. What you need to do? Parking brake, parking brake to hold the vehicle. All right? B. 
uh -huh. uphill great the uh, program again uh, uh, every single time the program advises you you make a mistake you well look down and you see the right words you need to remember for the future well reference uphill great use parking brake good question number 33 again you are driving a heavy vehicle huh you now must exit a highway and uh, oh well using off-ramp off-ramp that does what that curves downhill you're probably familiar with that kind of you know uh, exit uh, ramp it curves downhill so what you should do in this situation you remember guys point is safety so you need to slow down but not simply slow down you need to slow down to save speed before the curve before the curve okay in advance you need to slow down to a safe speed not the posted limit speed limit is not safe enough for you because the vehicle is heavy okay you don't have to wait until you're in the curve again that would be uh, very unwisely and uh, well not safely so well, when you need to exit a vehicle uh, to exit a highway on a heavy vehicle please slow down to a safe speed before the curve safe speed before the curve question number 34 um, you must park on the side of a level straight four lane divided highway uh -huh, that's a point you need to park on the side of a level on the side of a level straight four lane divided highway where should you place the reflective triangles you see I told you guys divided highway that's a point if it is divided all three of them you usually have uh, to use three triangles right all three of them should be put behind you okay and uh, to the rear in other words to the rear all three of them and please remember one need to put uh, 10 feet to the rear of your vehicle uh, the second one 100 feet to the rear of the vehicle and the third one is 200 feet to the rear it's not uh, well difficult to well to choose the right answer three times rear one rear two rear three in other choices so you see it's uh, like a rear rear front uh -uh, no uh, again front rear rear no, front so all three to the rear it doesn't even like uh, make a much difference 10 100 200 all three to the rear or well to your vehicle of the vehicle all right rear 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 triple rear number tw uh, question number 35 you are driving on a two-lane road and on coming driver well drifts into your lane and is headed straight for you which of this is most often the best action to take uh, please remember and uh, this rule is applied also in uh, well most of the situation you can encounter on the road you always need to steer to the right in real life it might be in different well uh, situation but for the exam for the purpose of the exam remember if you are asked what you need to do if somebody is heading straight to you well steer to the right is always a right choice Invasive maneuver. steer to the right well number 36 break faith a uh, specific uh, word specific terminology which is applied to the condition when your brakes start while well, losing the power when they are very close to well to fail when they are well it's time for well for you to take care of the brakes to adjust to fix them so fade that's something that's condition when brakes start working improperly 
So you are asked what the break fade is associated with. And uh, you need to remember that one of the conditions which can, uh, well, uh, cause break fade is breaks getting very hot. And when it might happen, when you use the, the brakes, your brakes too frequently. When you push the brakes all the time, well, without uh, good reasons. So, brake fade can be caused by the brakes getting very hot. Let's see. Yes. Fade, hot. Fade, very hot. Number 37. Now you're asking about uh, overheating of the engine. And uh, you ask it which of the three given statements are, uh, well, one of them is correct about engine overheating. Which of the statements about engine overheating is true, correct statement. And please remember, and this rule is also always applied to the safety matter. You should never, never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until the system is cooled. Most of the modern vehicles are equipped with the, well, special, um, special container, coolant container, and then that coolant container you might uh, open the, well, uh, uh, the cap. But on the radiator cap, never remove Never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until the system is cooled. Because occasionally, well, the, the engine can be, uh, like, uh, get very hot. It could be dirty. Yeah. Overheating, never remove the radiator cap. Question 38. Well... Which of these statements about overhead clearance is true? Overhead clearance, the distance between the top of your vehicle and the lowest point of some, like, you know, bridge, tunnel, something you need to go under. That is called overhead clearance. And uh, please remember that the weight of a vehicle changes its height. And uh, obviously, if you like load your vehicle heavily, it will be lower than if it's empty, right? Without cargo, without load. Please remember, the weight of a vehicle definitely changes it, its height. Okay, let's see. B, hit enter. Yes. And the program again reminds you overhead clearance is connected with that particular phenomenon the weight changes height of the vehicle question number 39 <clears throat> which of the statements about vehicle fire is true so uh, please remember a burning tire a burning tire should be cooled with water the shortest answer is the correct one here. So that's that's something you have to do in case of the vehicle fire and even to prevent the fire because the burning tire and uh, well overheating tire should be cooled with water. That's the correct action and that's the only correct actions at the uh, well uh, at the fire scene. You, you need not to open the trailer, uh, the, the box, uh, trailer box. You, you need not touch the, um, the engine. That's the only thing, true thing, allowed thing, and required thing you need to do. A burning tire should be cooled with water. And only water, by the way. Not any other, uh, well, maybe only sand, but not any other liquid. Okay? Burning tire should be cooled with water. Very good. Tire, water. Question number 40. You are driving a long vehicle, which, well, that makes wide turn. You want to turn left from one street onto another. Left turn, okay? Long vehicle, making wide turns, and now you need to make left turn, to turn left. 
and both streets the streets you the street you are driving on is two lane two way street and the, the the street you need to turn in is also two lane two way street you should what you should do please remember it's very uh, well also um, wise uh, um, way uh, how you do the turns uh, in the real life halfway halfway through the intersection left turn especially you need to pull your vehicle forward until you get this point center of the intersection it's called halfway through the intersection and only now only then you begin turning your vehicle you do not make your turn as soon as you enter you do not make your turn well uh, at the end you make your turn you begin turning vehicle when you have way through the intersection you pull it straight forward until you reach the halfway at the intersection and then you begin turn it and that's the way uh, the safe way uh, how you need to do uh, well turns uh, on a long vehicle uh, while well, uh, driving the long vehicle okay let's see if we are correct yes so probably a left turn halfway Question number 41. You must drive on a slippery road. Slippery, huh? Which of this is a good thing to do in such a situation on a slippery road? Please remember, um, you should slow down gradually. Gradually. Gradually is a good word, actually. Uh, when you see gradually, that most probably would be the correct answer. So, on a slippery road you should slow down gradually, gradually. Right? safe way yeah. safe that's a, way that's a safe way safety first and uh, we choose the answer we click the enter and the program confirms yes we are correct slippery road gradually well yeah. actually everything needs to be done gradually on the road question number 42 uh which of the statements about acceleration about acceleration is true true correct statement you need to locate the correct statements please remember when you are asked about acceleration uh, that's the direct shortcut to the right answer rough acceleration ah, can cause mechanical damage mechanical damage when you see the word acceleration and you you need to find the right statement about the acceleration please remember this is the correct answer this is the right statement rough acceleration can cause mechanical, mechanical damage, damage. Mm -hmm. and uh, let's see if we are correct yes acceleration if you are asked about acceleration in the question, so the the hint, the key word for the answer is mechanical damage. Mechanical damage. Question number 43. Uh, which of these statements about brakes is true? Now we need to find out what statement, what the correct, what the uh, statement is correct about the brakes. And uh, please remember, actually, again, there is another hint. The longest statement is the correct one. Okay, that's the one way to, uh, well, uh, find the right statement. And also read it. The heavier a vehicle or the faster it is moving, the more heat the brakes have to absorb. Absorb. It. The more heat these brakes should have, uh, sh have to absorb, absorb to stop the vehicle. Okay, the faster vehicle is moving, more heat the brakes need to absorb to stop it. Okay, and the again the key word is to absorb. When you ask it about the brakes, look for absorb. Absorb. Let's see. Click A, click enter. Yes. If you are asking about the brakes, the key words is heat to absorb. Absorb. Question number 44. When the roads are slippery, what you should do? Uh, you remember two questions ago, we, we had that, that kind of question on a slippery road. You remember you should have uh, dr driven gradually, may, may, may turn gradually. In here, the same. If the road's slippery, what you should do? 
you should make turns as gently as possible. This is another key word. The word gently, gently. most likely 99.9% .9 of cases indicates for you the correct answer. Gently. Gently. Slippery road, you should make turns and all other maneuvers as gently as possible. Gently. Let's see if we are right. Mm -hmm. Click enter. Yes. Slippery. Gently. Okay, let's move. Question number 45. You are checking your brakes and suspension system for a pre-trip inspection. You see, pay attention to this question. Which of these statements is not true? Which means two, of these, two out of these three statements are correct and you need to locate the wrong one. The wrong one about something about brakes and suspension system. And uh, again, please be very careful and cautious. Brake shoes should have brake fluid on them. Uh-uh, that's not correct. Uh -huh. That means this statement is wrong. This is not true statement, right? And that's the correct answer because you ask it to find which statement is not true. Okay, and the brake shoes should have brake fluid brake on them. Fluid brake fluid and this is the the other way how you can uh, memorize the correct answer when you ask it about not true not true look for brake fluid brake fluid brake fluid that's the key word here question number 46 aha uh -huh. the same kind of question the driver's manual suggests several things to do when you pass a vehicle and which of this is not one of them. Again, you guys are asked to uh, find the wrong statement, which in this particular case would be the correct answer, right? So let's see which one is wrong statement. And um, mm, again, it's longer. <clears throat> uh, the well, the longest uh, answer is the the right one. At night, turn on your high beams before you start to pass and leave it on, leave them on until you have completely passed the vehicle. That's the question which is not recommended by the uh, textbook, by the driver's manual. You should not have, uh, you should not do this. And, uh, well, um, that's, that's why it's a, a correct answer in this particular case. We were asked to locate a wrong statement, which one is not recommended by the driver's manual. Please, do not blind as a driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in this particular case, if, you, if, you leave them, high beams. if you leave them on, you can blind, yeah, make them blind. Okay. Not one of them. Turn on high beams. Very good. Question number 47. The distance that you should look ahead of your vehicle while driving amounts to about, well, how, uh, what how many miles, mile. yeah, what a portion of the miles at normal highway speed. And uh, in this particular uh, case, uh, it's uh, one quarter. One quarter. One quarter of the mile um, is a, a distance you should look ahead of your vehicle when you're driving on a highway with a highway speed. The highway is... a uh, not given uh, to you, uh, well, uh, the people uh, who wrote the question assume that you remember that the normal highway speed is 55 miles per hour. And uh, at this speed, at a normal highway speed, the distance you should look ahead is uh, about one quarter of the mile. It one quarter. Okay, very good. Look ahead, one quarter. Question number 48. Uh, you are starting your vehicle in motion from a stop. As you apply power to the dry wheels, they start to spin. What should you do? What you should What should you do? You definitely uh, need to take your foot off the accelerator. If you do something and uh, it causes the problem, so you have to seize this uh, action, right? 
as you apply power to the dry wheels, you, you, you push the accelerator pedal and uh, the dry wheels start to spin. Obviously, what you have to do, you have to stop the acceleration. You, ta you have to take your foot off the accelerator, off the accelerator. Don't press the gas pedal. Yeah, don't do anything else. Don't push the brakes. Don't uh, try a lower gear. You just take your foot off the accelerator. Mm -hmm. Off the accelerator. Question number 49. Which of these is the most important thing to remember about emergency braking? Emergency braking. And uh, <clears throat> again, the uh, safety first. Uh, please remember, in emergency braking means that uh, something wrong is going on around you on the road, right? So, uh, and uh, if you, uh, well, use your brakes too sharply, okay, you cannot control your vehicle. Because if you uh, mm, use the wrong way to, uh, to, to slow to brake, the to vehicle, fast. yeah, to slow the vehicle in the emergency situation, the wheels may be skidding. In this case, you cannot control your vehicle. So again, when you are asked in the questions, what is the most important thing to remember about emergency braking? Well, uh, uh, again, the uh, writers, the question writers, they want you to remember that you need to break uh, well, um, so gradually, gradually. Hey, remember in previous questions, gradually, uh, because if the wheels will be skidding, you cannot control your vehicle. Okay, let's see if we are correct. B, uh, enter and uh, emergency braking cannot control. Question number fifty. Which of these statements about tires and hot weather driving is true? It's easy. It's easy. You please remember in these questions when you see 100 miles, uh -huh, that's the clue indication of the correct answer. You should inspect your tires every two hours. Every two hours. Or every 100 miles. Or every 100 miles. When driving in a very hot weather. Okay, in the hot weather, when you ask it about tires and the hot weather, okay, look for two hours or 100 miles. That's how you suppose you, you actually need to, uh, need to stop and check um, your tire. A, enter. Yes, when you ask it about tires in the hot weather, you should inspect them. Every 100 miles. Every 100 miles. You should stop. You should exit the vehicle. You should go to the, to the uh, every single tire and uh, well, actually touch it, check with your uh, well, palm. Question number 51. Your vehicle is in a traffic emergency and may collide with another vehicle if you do not take action. Which of this is good rule to remember in such a time? And uh, uh, well, in that, uh, in this question, um, uh, you need to remember that you can almost always turn to miss an obstacle. Oh well, more quickly than you can stop. You remember your stopping distance at 55 miles yeah. per hour is a, a long one lens of football, football field. field as was said in the previous question so sometimes and not sometimes almost always turning is a well more safe action than trying to stop again when you read the question and you see traffic emergency may collide with another vehicle you need to do something take an action and what is a good rule to remember in this situation, at least in order to, well, answer the question right, that you can almost always turn to miss an obstacle more quickly than you can stop, okay? So, again, the uh, trying to stop is not uh, always the safe action. Actually, never in a hot, heavy okay. vehicle. Question number 52. In which case of fire can you use water 
two words are clue for you fire and when you can use water to put it out and the, the this is the, the only one right answer tire fires tire fires uh-huh it's like a rhyme fire tire fire tire, tire. fires tire. that's when you can use water all right good use water tire fires very good 53 to help you to stay alert while driving you should what should you do to help yourself to stay alert and uh, mm, again safety first remember guys safety first that's why in order to stay alert you should take short breaks before before you get drowsy before you get drowsy and again the same general rule is applied here you do everything before it happens you check your uh, well uh, equipment before fire happens you check uh, your vehicle before some something wrong can happen slow down yeah. before you enter the slow curve slow down before you enter the curve so again before is like a magic key words which is indication that probably this question is most probably correct so to stay alert all right you should do it before take short breaks before you get drowsy before something wrong potentially dangerous can happen take take breaks before okay let's see let's check if we are right yes stay alert drowsy well before question number 54 to avoid a crash you had to drive uh, into the right shoulder and you are now driving on this shoulder at 40 miles per hour all right the question is how should you move back onto the pavement how should you move back onto the pavement well well you're driving on the shoulder the speed well about 40 miles per hour and uh, in case you need to return to the pavement what's the correct action to do it and uh, well again the same general rule is applied here uh, the longest uh, is uh, the, the the right one if the shoulder is clear that's the clue if the shoulder is clear stay stay there stay to the right until your vehicle comes to a stop but do so guys only when you read if the shoulder is clear aha uh -huh. if the if it's clear then you should stay there until you bring vehicle to a complete stop and only then move back onto the pavement when it is safe actually all our conversation in this particular case is uses because as long as you see safe, safe. Uh, most probably that's the correct answer. everything supposed to be safe safety is a uh, well uh, main concern main concern let's see if we're right uh-huh yeah safe that's the only thing you need to remember uh, safe and uh, return when it's safe question number 55 which uh, of the statements about driving in areas with a strong wind is true all right when you see the word wind all right go directly to the word tunnel tunnel when you see word wind tunnel wind tunnel that's where the wind is most like uh, dangerous uh, causes most of the of the problem winds are especially a problem when coming out of the tunnels when you read wind all right go and look for tunnels winds are especially a problem when coming out of tunnels like remember be prepared hold the mm, steering wheel firmly and get ready that it might be wind when you come out of the tunnels strong wind tunnels right 56 which of this is a good thing to do when driving at night easy stuff what you should do at night at Again, night the longest yeah answer. the longest is the, the longest answer the right one and if you read it yeah keep your speed slow enough again safety first you drive at night 
So probably, most probably, the visibility is not too good, huh? as good as, a, as a, the, the daytime. So you should adjust your, your speed. You should keep your speed slow enough in order to be able to stop so you can stop within the range of the of your headlights there is in another clue another keywords here if even you don't know anything about like slowing enough if you see within within that's most probably the correct answer so somehow it is applied let's see a enter yes when you see whenever you see within most probably correct yes, answer. Yes, yeah, indicator of right answer question number 57 uh-huh uh, you are driving a 40 foot vehicle at 35 miles per hour road is dry visibility is good what is the least amount of space you should keep in front of your vehicle to be safe all right again uh, road drive visibility good uh, the length of your vehicle is 40 feet and the speed is 35 uh, how much space you need to have in front of you between yourself and the vehicle in front of you and uh, mm, for 40 feet vehicle it's four seconds one second per each per 10 feet 10 the feet 10 feet one second if the vehicle is 40 four seconds this vehicle would be 60 it would be six hundred feet it would be 10 seconds and also you need to pay attention to uh, speed uh, this rule is applied uh, when the speed is below 40 so 40 feet vehicle 35 miles per hour four because the speed is below 40. it would be it will be actually another questions we ask it when the 40 foot vehicle is driven at speed 55 miles per hour and in in that case you will your, your choice would be the right choice would be five seconds but here 40 foot vehicle 35 miles per hour below 40 the right answer is four seconds okay very good four seconds 58 what is the proper way to hold a steering wheel how you should hold the steering wheel to be safe to like not to lose control of your vehicle in emergency situation well obviously you should do it with both hands it doesn't help much in this particular case all three of them with both hands uh, so this is the word which uh, can help us at the opposite, opposite. side of o the wheel opposite side both hands but not but on the opposite sides of the wheel that's how um, according to the safety uh, requirement and um, well uh, common sense also you should hold the steering wheel opposite sides of the wheel with both hands let's see if we are right yes we probably are opposite sides 59 high beams should be something is asked about uh, use of high beams and uh, uh, please remember safe safe and legal legal two good words yeah high beams should be used when it is safe and legal as long as you find uh, this word safe that's uh, the indication of the right answer exactly question number 60 uh, you can see a marking on a vehicle ahead of you the marking is a red triangle with an orange center what does the this marking mean well in this particular case guys you just simply remember that this marking is a slow moving vehicle slow moving uh, red triangle with the with an orange center that's the marking which is put on the uh, well service vehicle slow moving vehicle. slow moving just simply commit to memory slow moving vehicle Question number 61. Which of these is not part of the pre-trip inspection 
of the engine compartment. In other words, uh, what you don't have to check when you do pre-trip inspection. Definitely valve clearance here is not a part of the regular pre-trip inspection, right? of the engine compartment. You need to check engine oil, you need to uh, check if electrical wiring uh, insulated uh, properly, but valve clearance is not part, not part of the pre-trip inspection. A regular pre-trip inspection, right? Let's see. A, enter. Yes, valve clearance, not part of the pre-trip inspection. <clears throat> Question number 62. The road you are driving on becomes very slippery due to the glare ice. Slippery. It became slippery. Okay, which of this is a good thing to do in such a situation? What you need to do to keep control of your vehicle, to keep control of your vehicle on a slippery road. And definitely, uh, um, you need to stop driving as soon as you can safely, safely, do so safely slow uh, safe safely is uh, uh, always clue the keyword indicating the right answer so on a slippery road you should stop driving as soon as you can safely do safely so all right very good let's see a enter yes on a slippery road stop driving safely question number 63 you wish to turn right from one two-lane, two-way street to another. And your vehicle is so long that you must swing wide to make a turn. So, uh, the question, how should you make a turn safely? And uh, the uh, right answer here is B, you should swing wide. When? When you complete the turn. When you complete the turn. Not when you begin. Not when you, no, no, you shouldn't uh, uh, drive straight. You should swing wide when you complete the turn. When you complete In the other turn. words, you need to, well, pull your vehicle for straight uh, until to until you reach uh, like a uh, halfway have the intersection so when you complete the turn when you or like uh, in, uh, in in the final uh, turn of your maneuver, in the final stage complete the turn okay let's okay. see complete yes when you need uh, uh, when you turn right you might be uh, shown a figure on the uh, exam but uh, um, uh, the point how you make a turn well, on a long vehicle is this one. You you make turn when you complete the turn, not in the beginning, but just in the final stage stage of your turn. Question number sixty four. You're driving a vehicle that could safely be driven at 50, 55 miles per hour on an open road, by the way. However, traffic is heavy. Another uh, vehicle. Uh, are driving at uh, 35 miles per hour, although the speed limit is 55. The safest speed for your vehicle is more likely to be. It's obvious. It's very simple. Uh, the question writer is trying to trick you, but uh, if the traffic, all the traffic, uh, all the vehicles in the traffic driving at 35 miles per hour, what is your safest speed most likely to be, or oh, definitely 35 miles Go per hour. with the flow. Yep, with the traffic, 35 miles per hour, yes. What, uh, question number 65. What is a counter steering? Counter steering. And again, that's something you need to welcome it to your memory. Uh, counter steering is uh, uh, turning the wheel back in the other direction after steering. So if you turn your steering wheel to the left to avoid the traffic to avoid the traffic emergency, then you need to counter steer back to the right. If you need if you need to turn your steering wheel to the right, uh, well then you need to return to counter steer your steering wheel back in the other direction. And by the way, pay attention guys, the longest huh? The longest answer is usually the correct one. 
and to avoid a traffic emergency. Okay. Counter steering, avoid traffic emergency. Avoid traffic emergency. This is a safe driving. Question number 66. <clears throat> Which of these statements about backing a heavy vehicle is true? Uh, easy stuff. Uh, right answer here is the first one. A. You should avoid backing whenever you can. Whenever. So if you can avoid backing, do it. If you can do a maneuver without backing, do it. Whenever you can, avoid backing. If you need to do it anyway, then you need to use uh, uh, helpers and uh, some other stuff to, well, uh, to, to improve your safe. safety, right? So, uh, the correct statement, true statement about backing, that is you should avoid backing, avoid backing. whenever you can. Whenever you can. Question number 67. Which of these statements about marking a stopped vehicle is true? Marking a stopped vehicle means you need to mark it. You need to put something, well, you have reflective, reflective triangles, three ref reflective triangles uh, with you in your cap. And you need to mark your vehicle, which is stopped, well, usually in the shoulder. And, uh, <clears throat> and here again, the longest answer is the correct one. If a hill curve keeps drivers behind you from seeing the vehicle, your vehicle, within 500 feet, the rear reflective triangles, triangles, the third one, uh, should be moved down the road to give adequate warning. Adequate warning. Right? So that's how you need to stop your vehicle, especially when, when uh, it is uh, like parked, stopped. Um, um, so if you usually keep uh, 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet behind. Yeah, on a hill or curve, the, the curve keeps driver behind you from seeing your vehicle. In this case, you need to get it back up to 500 feet to give adequate warning. All right? Let's see. Yes, 500 feet. So you remember 500 in the answer. Question number 68. Which of these best describes how you should use the brake pedal on a steep downhill grade? On a downhill grade, on the downgrade, how should you use your brake pedal? Please remember, that's something you just always need to be aware of, need to remember. Light, steady pressure. Light, steady pressure. Not pumping. It's a, in the case of emergency, you need to pump it. Not repeated strong pressure, then release. It's again in case of emergency. On a regular driving, during the regular driving, on a steep downhill grade, you need to use your brake pedal or with a light, steady pressure. Light, steady pressure. Okay, very good. Question number 69. Again, which of these statements about using turn signals is true. In other words, how should you use your turn signals? Again, the question is about safety. And uh, uh, here is uh, like uh, <laughs> the shortest answer is the correct one, but uh, key, pay attention early. Early. Signal early. You remember we discussed before? There was word before. Before. Everything you need to do before. Before emergency happens, before uh, well, fire happens, uh, you need to check the, your equipment before the trip. Early is the synonym of the before. Early. Signal early. early. All right. So, turn signals. How should you use them? Uh, when turning, you should signal early. Early. Very good. Question number 70. Which of these statements about double clutching and shifting is true? And again, guys, it's easy. You have to use uh, your tachometer. Tachometer. Because it shows you the RPM uh, your engine works uh -huh, with. And uh, when do double clutching and shifting, you should use the tachometer. tachometer. You can use the tachometer. You should use the tachometer, uh -huh, according to the uh, driver's manual. Because tachometer 
is able to tell you when to shift. We're not discussing what the double clutching is, and you actually not ask it about the what double clutching is. But you need to remember, while doing double clutching and shifting, tachometer is a clue. <clears throat> Question number 71. Which of these statements about speed management is true? Speed management. And uh, here again, <clears throat> Uh, a, a little like a uh, tricky word for you, which can help you within. Within. We discussed it before. This, uh, well, uh, word uh, is uh, very um, frequently used, and it's uh, uh, usually a mark, landmark of the correct answer. Uh, let's read the, the whole answer. You should choose a speed that lets you stop within the distance that you can see ahead. So, speed management, your speed should be managed in the Adjust. way, should be adjusted, should be, uh, well, maintained uh, in that uh, level that let you stop within the distance that, that you can see ahead, all right? Within. Very short question. Retarders, question 72 retarders and uh, obviously you ask it what the retarders are and or what they are used for right and uh, in this particular case in the case when you ask it this just uh, one word question you need to remember that retarders are very useful things they can uh, uh, help you to slow the vehicle they prevent uh, extra wear of your brake pads but at the same time, in case of poor traction, they can cause the driver wheels to skid. So you cannot use them on a slippery car. road. On a slippery poor road, direction. yeah. On a slippery road, when your the, like tires tread depth is not enough, uh, so you have a poor traction of your tires with the road surface. Uh, in this particular case, retarders can be uh, use of retarders can be dangerous, uh -huh, because they can cause the driver driver driving wheels to skid because of the poor traction. Poor traction. Let's see, poor traction. Again, please remember, retarders are very good devices to use to help well to slow the vehicle. Save your gas. Uh -huh, and brake pads wearing. At the same time, eh, when the poor traction, the driving wheels could, uh, well, get to skid. Question number 73. To correct the drive wheel braking skid, you should. And uh, uh, we discussed this uh, before also. When something happened, when, when you do something wrong and, uh, well, some, some potential dangers may happen, what you should do, you should stop doing this, uh, well, dangerous, uh, well, action. Action, yeah. Stop yeah. braking. If, you, if it's braking skid, what you should do, you definitely should stop braking. Stop braking. And then turn quickly and then counter steer. But first thing, most important thing you need to do is to stop braking stop because it's braking, braking skid. The dry wheels uh, go to skid because of excessive braking. Uh huh. So stop braking first. Seventy-four. When exiting or entering on a curved freeway ramp, you should. What you should do on a curved ramp? Definitely, simply maintain the posted speed limit would not be enough. Because not for talking, heavy, yeah, heavy we, machine. You, you uh, operate a heavy vehicle. So for you, you should maintain speed 5 to 10 miles per hour under the posted speed limit. Simply posted speed limit is not enough. For you, on a curved ramp, you should maintain your speed 5 to 10 miles per hour under the post speed limit. 5 to right? 10 miles under the post speed limit. What we do? Uh, uh, we made a mistake. I accidentally uh, choose, uh, chosen. <laughs> you see, uh, by the way, this is a good example how the program uh, corrects you, how the program advises you which answer is correct. You see, I uh, accidentally. 
cho have chosen a uh, well choice wrong C answer. wrong answer and the program tells you mistake. The correct answer is A. When a curved freeway, you need to maintain your speed 5 to 10 miles per hour on the limit. And again, every, well, next time when you do the mistake, well, occasionally. Our program will correct yeah, you. Our program will show you that mm -mm, uh, mistake, the, the, the correct answer is such and such. And you see uh, the number of mistakes we did. So, we, so so far we did good. We did no mistakes. Only so far, one mistake. Now, uh -huh, the program starts to count. One mistake. All right. Question number 75. Which of the following vehicles will have the longest stopping distance? Longest. The longest stopping distance in case if you need to choose between empty truck, loaded truck, and bobtail tractor. And the correct answer is C, bobtail tractor. Bobtail. Why? Because bobtail tractor is uh, the the lightest one. Okay? It's it's not loaded. It, it's not hooked to the uh, <clears throat> trailer. And the suspension system of the bobtail tractor is designed to work under a heavy load. So when the bobtail tractor is not hooked with the trailer, you cannot use the uh, the power of your brakes and that's a, a reason why bobtail tractor which is not hooked with the trailer have a long has a longest stopping distance please remember about it. bobtail tractor bobtail bobtail longest well <clears throat> easy stuff how many red reflective triangles are you, are you required to carry of course three Three, remember, three reflective triangles you need to have in your cap. Uh, well, you are required to carry in your vehicle for your safety. All right, three. Question number 77. You are required to inspect your truck within how many miles after beginning the trip? And uh, again, that's something you just simply need to memorize. 25 miles according to the driver's manual when you start your trip after 25 miles of your trip you need to stop and by the law you are required to inspect your truck everything huh? your tires uh, the uh, your load uh, <clears throat> 25 miles per hour question number 78 well, there are two types of jackknives. And jack they are trailer, tractor, or both A and B. Guys, uh, uh, we're not going to explain you what the jackknives is. Uh, just remember, you ask it about two types. All right, so both A and B. A and B. Two, both. Uh huh, two, both. Because uh, re really, th th there is two. There are two types: trailer jackknife and tractor jackknife. The, the correct answer when you ask it about two types, there are, and they are. They are both A and B, right? Very good. Seventy-nine. The new BAC (blood alcohol concentration) for commercial drivers to be considered intoxicated while driving a, com a commercial vehicle is. 0 0.04 0 0.04 please remember it's very important two times less than a regular yeah driver. so uh, for you as a commercial drivers to be considered intoxicated when you are behind your wheel of your commercial vehicle the BAC is 0 0.04 okay in, uh, and and uh, this uh, blood alcohol concentration limit is uh, uh, the same for every single uh, state in the United States of America. 0 0.04. That's a commercial federal regulation. Question number 80. Where should the ignition key be during the pre-trip inspection? Easy stuff also. In your pocket. Safety, safety. Keep it with you. Keep it in your pocket. Don't leave it in the ignition. Don't leave it on the driver's seat. Keep it with you in your pocket. That that, that, that's where the ignition key should be. Okay. Let's see. Yes. Ignition key. 
Okay, and now 80 questions are completed, done, and uh, the program uh, produces the test results immediately. So we did 80 questions, and uh, you remember so far we did one mistake, which is 1.3%, uh, which is very good. And uh, you have uh, like uh, three choices, three options. You might uh, repeat questions with wrong answer, which we recommend you do. Because sometimes, uh, especially, uh, well, after first attempt, you might uh, be having like 10, 15, 20. It is how you learn. Yeah, it doesn't. It's how you learn. You so repeat questions with wrong answers. So, repeat question with wrong answers. And when you choose this option, the program gets, uh, well, gets you back to the only wrong answers. And you'll be having chance to, well, learn to repeat. If you make a mistake again, again, don't worry. You'll be uh, uh, well prompted to return to this. Uh, Until you make zero mistake. Uh -huh. You uh, have an option to get back to main menu or to exit. Let's try question with wrong answer. Yeah, you remember we did this uh, mistake when exiting or entering on a curved freeway ramp. So let's not do the same mistake again. Uh -huh. Five to ten miles per hour under the positive speed limit. Okay. Hey. Boom. Oh, yes. now we are right. right. And uh, because we made only one mistake and we corrected this mistake, okay, we are back at the well, test results. Now, guys, you choose main menu and you return to general knowledge. Not return, you choose either general knowledge 1 or general knowledge 2 and do it with the well, same technique. And, uh, and good luck. And by the way, for general knowledge too, uh, well, re we are referring you to the, well, uh, the separate, DVD, CD. separate CD, DVD. Okay? Good luck, guys. Thank you.